I really like the uh, previous uh, presentations because they give a high-level overview of, about what um, Bitcoin was, what is Ethereum, and what is the general security uh, assumption about Ethereum and, and general blockchains. And uh, we are going to talk about a little bit about hacking smart contracts, and I'm going to cover the three, basically the biggest hacks in, in smart contracts, and why hacking. Uh, that was previous, previously mentioned. Uh, there are a lot of money going missing because of smart, con smart contract hacks. And uh, just this year, there's an estimate about $10 billion getting lost because of hacks. So it, it actually, it, it, it almost, almost feels like sometimes as, as people trying to be at houses uh, without a structural engineer understanding how uh, not to get a house collapsed. So this should, smart contract security and hacking and, and all these kind of concerns shouldn't be an afterthought. It's actually a, a should be just baked in in the, in the process of, of planning how to build a, a contract or a, a smart contract system or a blockchain system or just like mm, some kind of uh, application on top of existing smart contracts. Uh, this is actually a short version of my three hour uh, workshop. It's a ha hands-on workshop. I did. I was doing it in UC Irvine, in uh, Hong Kong Polytech University, and also in in South Korea, Kais University. And uh, I found hacking and teaching through hacking uh, as the best way to bring someone who just heard about uh, blockchains and has a vague idea or, or vague uh, concept about what blockchain is to actually having a hands-on experience and. Uh, hacking some smart contracts on a test net network and also interacting with them, deploying some smart contracts, and even just like lawyers uh, got huge success in it. So I really recommend it for you to just after this talk, if you are into it and you want to get into it and you want to learn how to develop smart contracts, then following this path uh, is highly recommended. So, uh, okay. What we are going to talk about is uh, first is the overview uh, about blockchains a little bit. Then we're going to interact with, with a test network, and then we're going maybe are going to deploy some smart contracts. Okay. So as uh, as uh, Mitchell was saying at the beginning, uh, blockchain is basically a chain of blocks together. And I'm going to skip through it very fast. I'm just going to tell you what what really is the main point is that if you think about like what. Bitcoin was, or Bitcoin is, is essentially just the same exact database duplicated across all the validators. So anyone who want, want to use the Bitcoin doesn't have, it's not necessary to trust anyone because you can sync the whole network, the whole chain, and you can uh, verify yourself the whole tr all the transactions. So uh, since everyone is, is, is um, basically verifying the same uh, spreadsheet, uh, so say spreadsheet, but it's just a database. Uh, if data is too much data is stored on the blockchain, so because some people are just saying, okay, we're going to uh, store x-ray images on blockchains, bullshit, most they just store the hash of it, and they, 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 they store the x-ray images of, of, uh, of the chain, because if it's if the chain is becoming too big, then the table or the database is becoming too big, and then just a few nodes can, can uh, basically run uh, the blockchain itself and then it becomes centralized. Then the main point is gone. So uh, Ethereum uh, is uh, a, a Turing complete uh, blockchain and one ETH, uh, basically you are using ETH to, play, to pay for uh, gas costs and pay for computation on Ethereum network. And one ETH is 10 to the 18 uh, VEI and VEI is the smallest denom denomination of, of uh, ETH. And uh, as it was said before, gas, gas cost is, is something you, play, uh, you pay for um, computation, and you have to pay it because uh, if you want to have a good mental model about like, what smart contract capable blockchains are, they are basically like if you're going to the, your local library and you are sitting down to a computer and you're just sitting there all, all yourself, then you are using that resource and blocking others to use that resource. So you have to pay for it. And all the computers, uh, all the validators are validating the same exact computer. So 
for example, in EAT 2.0, there are like more than 120,000 validators. Uh, basically, they, 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 they are doing the same exact calculation. Okay, uh, solidity is the, is the main or, or most, most uh, common language uh, which complies to EVM, Ethereum virtual machine, and it's coming from a uh, family of C languages. It's very, uh, very, very similar to JavaScript, and you are creating basically contracts and not, uh, or not, not objects. Um, you till the, the, the fourth version of Solidity, the constructor of, of, the, uh, of a contract was actually uh, the same had, had to be the same name as, a, as, as, the, as the contract name itself. And there was a hack about that at the beginning because someone just forked an existing contract. It, ha it happens a lot in, in smart contracts and, and, and crypto that someone is doing a, a good project and then if it's really good, the biggest sign of, of success in, in, in uh, crypto if forks are appearing. So people see the success and they try to copy the code deploy it and making just some minor changes and, and trying to, to uh, get fame or money or whatever. Uh, and actually there was a, was a hack about that because they changed the contract name itself but they didn't know what they are doing so they didn't change the, uh, uh, the constructor itself. But since the newer versions of the language of Solidity, you have to use, a, for this reason, you have to use the constr uh, constructor uh, uh, word itself and not the name of the, of the contract. And there are some, uh, as, as Silver was saying, storing um, values on the blockchain costs a lot, and there's uh, different type of values like Boolean. You can uh, uh, store addresses. You can also store numbers, and unsigned in integer is basically an unsigned integer, 256, so you have 256 bytes a bit so to, to store a number. You can also have modifiers uh, because as soon as you deploy a smart contract, it gets an address, and everything defined in the smart contract itself cannot really change. Uh, there are some methods to create upgradable contracts, but in proxy contracts, and so on and so on. But in that case, uh, what, what's happening is they are deploying a new contract, and from, the, from a, in, in a proxy contract, they change a ver, uh, an address and, and just Basically, it's a pointer to a new address of the uh, new deployed address of the contract itself. Uh, so you have to have to basically define every every single functionality what you want to have uh, want to give to the contract itself. So, for example, if you want to give an ownership property to a contract, you have to code it. So it, the contract itself has to have a variable uh, about, about storing who is the owner of the contract itself. And you can create uh, modifiers like only owner, and you can use, uh, you use it on, 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 on different mission critical functions, and, and those are making sure that, for example, the only owner modifier is making sure that uh, only the owner can, uh, can call that function, and if someone else is uh, calling, in, calling it, then it's reverting back and, and the transaction won't succeed. So, um, also, you have to. There is this uh, word that payable. If you want to send, if you want to send eat, so Ethereum, you, you want to send money to a function, you have to use this payable uh, modifier. Okay. Uh, uh, there is a function uh, for self destruct. Uh, it's basically just like killing the contract itself and moving all the funds, which is basically Ethereum. So all the ETH are moved to, a, to an address like defined here. Uh, um, and this is a way to move money to an address uh, which is not, so, so if, if you use this, this is just like a side note. Uh, if you are using self destruct, then you are moving funds to, for example, to a, to a contract, and that contract may not know about that, that it's, it's called that function, or, or it, at least it, it got some money this way. So, uh, how can, what are the different ways of transferring value um, in Solidity? Uh, the transfer and, and send, they are basically the same. Uh, the slight difference is that send is actually returning a bool, whether the, it, it's true if the, the sending on f of fund was successful and it returns false if it's not, and transfer is actually throwing, so it's like it, it, it's, it's reverting if the transaction wasn't successful. And in the case of uh, 
call and delegate call. So basically, in, 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 in Solidity, you are just using an address you got. And for each and every address, you can just like write to like have this function, which you can call call and delegate call. And the first argument of these functions are basically the method ID. And the method ID is the first four bytes of the catchock 256, which is a SHA-3 hash of the description of, uh, of, of the method itself. And so that's the first, met first argument, and then the, the, the rest of the arguments follow. And uh, the difference between call and delegate call is that delegate call is actually inviting an, an outside function within the contract itself. So it, 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 it works like, uh, like as if it was within the contract. So it can access the storage values, and it can override the storage values within the contract itself. So, so, it, so delegate call is super, super uh, um, dan dangerous. It, 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 you have to know really what you are doing if you are using it. And also, in these call and delegate call functions, you basically not just calling a remote, uh, not just calling a remote um, function, but also giving gas to it. So it can do calculations and it can call back. So it can make calls back to the original contract. And we are going to get into it why it's, it's, uh, it's not always good. So uh, also, uh, this remix uh, is an almost like VS code, but within the browser. And you can use it to, uh, to write Solidity and deploy it within the virtual machine or within the memory of your browser, or you can deploy it to test networks, and you can deploy contracts to, to, to the, the real Ethereum network. And so using remix.ethereum.org is, is highly recommended for testing purposes. OK, uh, we are going to use MetaMask. Uh, I guess most of you heard about that. It's a browser extension uh, within uh, all the major browsers. So, uh, that's what we are going to use. And this is how you can, if you install the MetaMask, this is how you can change, uh, the, ad change the network to the Rinkibai uh, test network. And these are the faucets you can use to get some test eat on the test network. So when you are doing some um, testing, and uh, some uh, you're just playing around, and most of the time what I recommend is actually using uh, Remix and just use your, uh, the memory of your computer. And if you want to try stuff out uh, kind of like real but not real, then I recommend using the Rinkybine net test network, get some test uh, eat, and, and then you can uh, play around. OK, uh, this is some information about how to use Web 3GS, but I'm going to show it to you, so no worries about that. And OK, let's have fun. So this is the main website. Uh, Open Zeppelin or, or Zeppelin, who uh, Zeppelin is basically uh, they are uh, they are they, they wrote this framework of uh, Ethernaut, which is a capture the flag uh, online uh, interface where you can basically hack uh, smart contracts on the test network. So it's kind of like a game starting out very easily. You just interact with, with some smart contracts. And then as you progress to the different levels, it gets harder and harder. You have to understand and dig deep and, and really grasp uh, fundamental uh, principles of, of Ethereum. So I really, really recommend this as, as, a, as a learning process to, to understand how Ethereum is working and what are the, what are the, uh, the peculiar uh, parts of Ethereum where you can basically lose a lot of money if you don't know the security implications. OK. So uh, I'm going to change uh, to mirroring. So uh, if you are going to the open Zeppelin, uh, this is what, what you find, and as, as I showed you, you, you need uh, MetaMask, and I'm on the Rinkybuy network, and I have some test eat, so this is all set up, this is all good. And the first uh, thing we are going to do, where, where we are going, to, what you, okay, first you, you need a, a developer console, and, uh, and if, we, if we just like hit refresh, it says, OK, everything is, is, is fine and perfect. Uh, there are some helper functions like help. It's, it's telling you what kind of uh, variables you have. And also, um, like player, this is my uh, eat address. 
And if the first uh, level which we are going to hack is going to be the token, uh, token level, which is five, and ju just I'm going to first. You have to get an instance. So you always, when you, when you, as you progress through the different different levels, you always request uh, instance of the contract which you are hacking. So you're not hacking uh, the main contract. You're always requesting one. So I'm just requesting one. I'm hitting confirm. Uh, I let it uh, run uh, in the background, and I'm just getting into okay, what uh, what we are talking about now. So in in 2010. Uh, as, as Silver was also was mentioning that in, in Bitcoin's case, you cannot have more than 21 million. And in 2010, actually 184 uh, billion new Bitcoins were made because of an uh, overflow hack. And it also happened uh, in the Ethereum network, this overflow issue, and uh, it all, all comes down how the numbers are represented in, 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 so in, in action EVM. And in, in this case, as I said, Unsigned integer is basically just a shorthand for unsigned, unsigned integer 256. And in, the, in that case, the smaller number is one, and the largest one is the 200, two to the 255 minus one. So that's the largest number you can represent with this amount of bits. And what's happening uh, in the underflow case is that if you just like subtract uh, like mm -hmm. one, so, so, so basically, write zero minus one, then you are just basically jumping to the highest number. And that's not something you were ex uh, expecting yeah, because you're just like writing your code and you forget that actually these are unsigned integers. They cannot be negative. And OK, it, it, it's not a big deal if it becomes, uh, if I just like subtract one, and actually it becomes a really big number and you are not expecting that. And the overflow is the same thing, is adding to the largest number, like in this case, if you add one, then it becomes zero. But obviously, uh, it can overflow from both directions if you are using a big, big enough number. Uh, and the solution for it is either way using safe math uh, or Solidity 8, because in Solidity 8, uh, 0 0.8, that is the first uh, version where actually, if you um, overflowing or underflowing, the default behavior was changed to revert the transaction itself. And you can use the previous uh, behavior, but uh, that's kind of a, a good, uh, good first principle to, to just change the, the, the behavior of underflowing and overflowing and throwing uh, on, on underflow or overflow. OK, how does it look like? So if we uh, go, to, go back uh, to uh, the Ethernaut, now I got my inst uh, uh, instance. So if I write contract, I see the contract itself in the developer console. Uh, you can get access to it from view, developer, and developer uh, tools. So I got my instance, and this is the code itself. So how does it, so what, what just quickly going through it, uh, there's like um, a mapping which says, OK, for each address, what kind of number of balance does it have? What is the total supply? There's a constructor uh, which is giving a uh, first uh, a su a supply of, of tokens to someone. And you can transfer it f uh, to some address, uh, some amount, and you can get the balance. So for example, if, if I just like a contract, I, get, I can balance off, and I can request my own own balance and you see okay oh this is what some crazy thing is going on here because it's like it doesn't seem like a number uh, but actually it's a big int uh, represented in javascript and it's 20 but you can also use web3 utils and two number and just uh, using the same same thing here so it's like okay i just converted to to normal number so you can see okay uh, my I'm the player, I have 20 tokens, what can you go wrong, right? So let's go to this tr uh, transfer function. Uh, if I call it, my address is going to be the msg.sender, and it first is checking whether uh, I, ha I have at least, uh, so if, if I, I have at least as amount of, of tokens as, as I'm trying to, to, uh, to transfer, and if I have, then it's subtracted from me and given, given to uh, the person who I'm sending into. 
the issue, it, it looks, looks fine, so nothing is wrong with that. But the main issue is uh, with the require statement. And actually, since balance is this unsigned integer, and if I'm subtracting more than I have, it never is going to get smaller than zero because it, it unsigned integers cannot represent numbers smaller than uh, zero. So in this case, it's going to be really big. So if I as, I, as, we saw, as we saw that, okay, I have 20 tokens now, if I want to increase it suddenly, I can just like, uh, okay, this, this is the contract, I can transfer, call the transfer function, yeah. And uh, let's say, let's, uh, let's send it to the uh, zero address, okay? So let's send it to the zero address, and let's say, let's say Okay, I'm sending 21. So obviously, it's not going to, I, I'm not going to have minus one token. I'm actually going to have the maximum amount that I can have. So let's see what the uh, transaction is doing. Um, okay, I'm confirming this, uh, this transaction, and, and let's see whether it's, it's mined or not. And in the meantime, I'm just uh, to hex, because it's going to be a really big so it's, 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 it says 40, 0 x 14, it's actually 20 in, in, in hacks. Okay, so as you see, it's like now my, my uh, uh, balance bec become really, really big. Actually, that's the biggest number, what can be represented by 256 uh, bits. And, uh, and now I've, uh, basically I'm just like solved the, this, this level. I have to submit the instance and then it's going to say, okay, I'm, I'm, I did my job well. So, um, so this is how you, you use Open Zeppelin, or sorry, uh, this Ethernaut. Uh, you request an instance, you try to hack it, and you submit it, and then you see what happened in the background. So in the meantime, as it's, as it's getting mine, okay, now it's, it says, okay, I, uh, it was all, all, all hacked successfully, and the level is completed. So, okay, uh, there is a parity hack in 2000. Uh, 17, and it worked like uh, there was a library, library deployed once, and there were wallet contracts, and the wallet contracts were calling, using delegate call to the library. So basically invited the library to their own uh, context, to their own home. They could use all the appliances, all the storage and everything. And the main issue was that actually init wallet was defined in the library, and what init wallet was doing is overwriting the owner. So within, uh, so and what the attacker can do is is uh, getting the method ID of the init wallet, which is the catchock 256 uh, hash, first for byte, and if if they call call it, then uh, I'm just zooming zooming in a little bit so you see it better. So what's happening, it's using the delegate call, and the library is invited within the contract itself, and then the owner is over overwritten and it's pawned. So it's like uh, it's really bad. Uh, and I, I won't mm, demo it now. I'm, I'm just jumping to the DAO hack, which, was happen which happened in 2016, and it's actually split the Ethereum network in the ETH and ETC, so Ethereum Classic and Ethereum, because Ethereum Classic didn't roll back the hack itself, and the main or the, or the, or the biggest uh, portion of the network were, was actually rolling back the hack itself. So what happened in 2016 is there were a big DAO decentralized autonomous organization created, which, is, which was basically a big hedge fund. And everybody contributed a shitload of money into it, and it, it got really big. And, uh, but there was a problem within the contract itself, and it wasn't apparent before it. So this is kind of like a side effect, or not previously not uh, uh, or un unintended effect of, of how the smart contract system works in Ethereum. So an attacker just like deposited some money, and within the DAO itself, when they called, withdraw, so they were like, okay, I'm just I'm out. I, I get my money out. I just like want to go. What happened? The DAO had a, a call function uh, to transfer. Eat back to the owner itself, and what's the problem with that? It's because because actually, uh, if the the caller itself is not a address, a normal address like like me me or you, which has a private uh, key, uh, but it's it's actually a contract. Then if you call uh, and you use call to send money to a contract, its fallback uh, function 
uh, and it got re renamed in Solidity now, they call it receive function, and the receive function is get called. And the problem is, uh, then it's, it becomes a ping pong match. So it's like, uh, the, I, I'm the attacker, I'm just telling the contract, okay, give my money back. And he's like, okay, here is your money. But as, as he's giving my money, he's calling my fallback function. So I have opportunity to call the withdrawal function again. So we can ping pong for a long time, basically as much uh, until we just like exhaust the gas limit. But we can ping pong and I can withdraw for, for a lot of time and then finally, they just deduct my balance. But they, they first sending the money to me, and then in the code itself, they, they deduct the balance. And, and that's not really a good uh, way to, to, to conduct business. So this is why the check set interact uh, uh, framework was like, uh, proposed in this case, that you, you should always check like, everything first, and then set, so make the changes within the code itself, the storage itself, and you should interact with, with different, with different uh, players as, as, as the last step. And also, it's a really good code hygiene if you use re, re uh, guard uh, for all the public functions which, are, which can be called from the outside. So this, this is going to be the last demo, uh, what I'm doing. First, uh, we are going to... Uh, find the tenth le level, I'm, I'm getting an instance. And in this case, we, we, we should, it's not enough to interact anymore. And uh, this is why we, we have to deploy a contract to hack this, this re-enterancy thing. And just quickly going through the code itself, it's very basic, it has like, uh, it's just using safe mods, as, as, I, as I mentioned, to, to not underflow or overflow. And it has a donate function. So if I'm donating money, it's giving it to my balance, whatever the amount of Ethereum I donated. I can ask for my balance, and I, I can also withdraw. And in this case of withdraw, it's first checking whether I have the enough amount of, to, to withdraw, and then it's sending it back to me, and then as an afterthought, as a last step, they're deducting it. So to, to hack this, since we need to have a fallback function or receive function, we need to deploy a contract itself. So just like quickly, uh, write it uh, uh, so I'm just first writing an interface uh, for this uh, for this contract so it's easier for me to call it uh, so it has the donate function and we are going to use also the window function so it's going to be easier this way uh, I could also just calculate the method ID with catch a hash function, but this is uh, much easier for me. So we have the attack contract. How, how it's going to work? Uh, first, it has to be payable because I'm going to send money to it because that's the way we, we, can, we can hack the contract itself. So first, I'm, I'm going to, to store who is the, 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 the contract we are trying to hack. So this is going to be uh, I target and target, and let's, let's have a uh, variable for, uh, storage variable for I target, target. And so that's, that's the first thing we are going to store. So who, who, we, are, who we are targeting. Okay, uh, then uh, I also want to, want to store my, my uh, address of my wallet. So if I hack them and get all the money out from the, uh, the contract itself, uh, my attacker contract knows where to forward the money. So this is going to be address, payable, and uh, private. This, this doesn't have to be, and this is private as well. And uh, this is going to be attacker or me. Let's call it me. And you, outside integer, uh, private. Let's call this batch. So what's going to happen is I, I just deploy the contract itself. And uh, there's an instance. So if we just call web tree utils, uh, not sorry, eat uh, balance, get balance, and contract that address, uh, it's obviously async. So I get basically back one eat. This is in Vey. So if you just like want, to, we, we just want to convert it uh, to eat. We can use um, web tree utils and from value and use the balance and just convert it to eat so you don't have to, okay. Uh, uh, eat, 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 eat. 
Okay, from right. Okay, at there. Okay, so you don't have to be, trust me. This that that balance what the contract has now currently is one eat, and uh, we try to get it out from there. So how are we gonna do that? First. Uh, we're gonna send, create this contract. We're gonna send some money to it, and how, the money is going to be. We just store how much, uh, how much money we send. We can access as, as a mass, MSG dot value, and because uh, the contract itself is always um, checking at, as a first step whether I'm, I'm trying to withdraw. Uh, so I have at, at least as much balance as I'm trying to withdraw. So I'm going to send it one ETH. It's going to have two ETH together, and I'm first going to get one, and then one again. So let's say, okay, batch, we just like store how much we send to it, and also we are going to store uh, MSG dot uh, sender, and this is a payable. So we are, we are storing where to send the money back, and we're also storing the, the batch, and we, uh, we just uh, we, we store the target set, and we also have to like donate now, so we, we can go now target, and since I created the interface for it, I just can donate and uh, address this. So I'm just donating uh, value batch. So what, what happened here is um, I can define uh, how much value I'm trying to forward to, the, to that uh, uh, function. And uh, basically, I'm just like making a donation in the name of the contract itself. So now it's all said and done. Let's create some uh, logging uh, events, because then it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be more, more uh, obvious what we are doing. And string, and note. And let's create one more. And uh, Address for address one. Let's create like this. So what I'm doing here is uh, creating some uh, logger uh, events, uh, so we can just track on the blo after the fact that we send a transaction. We can uh, uh, see okay what what was the execution uh, or the order of execution. Uh, in the transaction itself. So I'm just like logging, okay, donate, and I'm, I'm, I'm donated. So uh, if I would just like run it now, uh, I would see these, these even. So, but this is not enough. Uh, actually, we need, uh, there is a receive. This is what, what is going to be uh, called back. And uh, there is, this is an eat, send eat. Uh, but there is also, uh, but this is enough. Okay, this is enough. So send it. So when, when this contract is getting it, so let's call it getting it, then this function is called that. So in this case, we want to do something. We want to actually call back the target itself. So let's create a function of uh, function uh, drain, and uh, this is public. So this, this, this can be called by anyone. So let's, let's say first, OK, let's check whether the uh, address of, uh, of the target has balance at least 0. And if it has at least 0 balance the target, then what we are doing is we are uh, calling withdraw. So then we are calling target, withdraw, and we are calling this function. And we are calling it with batch because that's, that's the amount we have. And to make it like uh, visible again, let's just write it drain. Uh, and in a payable, we just call it uh, receive, and also we call drain. So, uh, so if, we, we, if the target has some balance, we just like instantly call back and tell, OK, give me some money uh, up until my my, my, my contribution, but I can repeat it several times. And at the end of the day, let's check whether uh, payable, oh no, address this balance. So if uh, th this is basically just uh, calling, uh, okay, uh, we withdrawing from target. And what I'm writing now, this new part is. Uh, checking whether this attacker contract has some balance, and if uh, attacker has balance contract. So if it has some balance, then 
uh, what we are doing is just transferring back to me, right? So me dot transfer and just uh, using this amount, whatever uh, this contract is having, right? So let's create some uh, additional uh, logging here so we can track it easier. So uh, drain is, is done, but in this case we are withdrawing, uh, withdraw, and let's track three different, uh, and this is not going to be address, this is going to be unsigned integer, because we are going to track the balance of uh, me. So in this case, balance uh, of me, that balance. Also, we are going to track um, the, the attacker, the contract, my contract balance, and also we are going to track the target balance. So we see what amount of uh, balance bef each address is are, are holding, and we are just emitting this, and we also uh, send back. So uh, we have some error. Okay, yeah, right. So public uh, external. Okay. So uh, so now we have our, our our whole attack suit ready. So what's going to happen now is uh, as I as I deploy this contract, I'm going to send with the deployment one eat, and it's storing the target, it's storing how much contribution I have to the DAO, and it's also storing my address. And it's also donating to the target uh, as much as I send. And uh, after it, it's all, all, all said and done, I'm going to use the drain function. And drain function is going to call the withdraw function, a withdraw function is going to send me back some eat, and this, this uh, E transfer is going to uh, call the receive function, which is going to call uh, drain again, and this is going until the target uh, has some balance. And uh, if we finish and everything said, said and done, we send everything back to myself. So this is at least the theory, and let's see how it works. So uh, we have to click here, and in environment now is JavaScript uh, virtual machine within my browser, so we have to use the injected web tree. And now it's it 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 uh, it's operand that the Rinkeby network is used, and this is my address, and I have to eat. So uh, I have to deploy this attack contract, but I have to give one eat to it. So I'm I'm sending one eater with the deployment, and I have to also de uh, define okay what's the target. So I'm go I'm coming back here and just like writing contract address. This is it. I'm just like quickly copying it. Uh, okay, this is it. This is this looks almost now. Let's uh, okay. Let's do it this way. Okay, the ending is fine. One one five two. So now it's everything is is up and ready. So I'm using my MetaMask, which is injected. Uh, it's using a Rinky by network. Uh, I sending one eat, and I'm I'm, I'm deploying with the target of uh, of of the, that specific contract. So I have to sign this. Uh, uh, transaction and, and let's see uh, what's happening, why it's, it's pro processing it, and finger crossed uh, for it to work, because if not, then it's not working, but that's okay as well. Uh, okay, in, in, the, in the meantime, okay, it's, it, it, it got, got mined, so every, it, it got mined, uh, and if we go, just scroll down, and maybe it's not that visible, but if we just scroll down, then we see the events uh, like donate, and then it's donated, uh, and every, everything is looks fine. And let's see how much uh, how much uh, eat the contract is having, and uh, now it has to eat. Obviously, first it had one. Now I'm through my attacker contract as some. As some Send one more. So now, now we, if we just scroll down here, we see the the attacker con, uh, contract, uh, and now I can click drain, and let's see what's happening. So I just have to sign it, uh, and now it's it's pending. And okay, it, it mined really fast. So if we scroll down, we are going to see the drain. We're going to see the withdraw. So for uh, the first 
uh, we are now here, basically. Now we, are, we, we see the drain, we see the withdraw. This is my eats. I have 1.08 eat. The uh, con contract eats have, ze have zero, and three is at the, uh, uh, the, the target contract itself. And then the, the receive is called, so now they send it back to me, the one eat, but uh, it, it, it's logged. And it's calling again the drain function. So we see the drain, drain function is, is called again. And now we see that currently they give us back one eat. So we, this contract has one eat. And out of two, they already sent back to, to us one. And then obviously we are calling again the withdraw function. And our receive function is called back again. And the drain function is called again. And now this uh, close is not true again, uh, anymore because um, all, the, all, all the ETH is just like withdraw from them. So we see the send back and we see that now at, that, at this stage, uh, the target has zero ETH, we have two ETH, the, the attacker contract has two ETH and 1.08 uh, is my current uh, uh, ETH uh, balance. And then obviously after we finish and everything is said and done, uh, we can now check Again, uh, okay, they have really zero, and let's write it this way. So, so let's see player. So now I have three eat, and the the contract it, uh, itself has zero. So I successfully robbed the contract. So I just just hit sub, uh, submit instance, and it's going to check whether everything is fine. And since it has zero. Uh, eat, eat, everything is fine, obviously. So this is how it's said and done. Uh, and it's just really just, just like on a rush, uh, what I, I showed you, because um, during this workshop, normally what I do is uh, we just like sit down, you go through everything, and, and you struggle with it. So uh, you learn much more, uh, and you get much more uh, hands-on experience than now, as I just like showed, showed to you. And if you uh, just keep Okay, it's, okay, now it's like mined, and it said, okay, we have completed the level, so awesome. So let's get back to the presentation itself. This is the last slide. Uh, so if you try to get into Ethereum de de development, I really, really strongly uh, recommend these resources because uh, it has a lot of... Um, Solidity and EVM has a lot of quirks, like you cannot really compare strings, and there is no length to the strings, so you have to use the hash, compare the hashes, and if you delete from an ar array, then you have to manually decrease uh, uh, the length of the array, and you have to fill in the, the void you created within the array itself. So there are a shitload of uh, quirks to uh, uh, smart contract development, Solidity, EVM, and uh, I strongly recommend these resources and just using the Ethernauts is I get so far uh, like in the last four years I, I didn't find any better way to really learn step by step from very basic level to just like interact with uh, smart contracts and then down to the okay how, how you use how to write smart contract using just opcodes and, and less than 10 uh, opcodes how, how you write a smart contract so uh, it really forces you to understand very deeply how the EVM is working and you learn you gain knowledge to build a house and be a structure uh, be a structural engineer so you know the house is not going to collapse and it's, it's not going to be like okay security is actually just like an afterthought because just three two days ago monoax finance just lost 31 million dollars because uh, it's basically a, a automated market maker with, with only one uh, token uh, with, with only with, it's not token pair it's just like token and one big pool of money and what happened is uh, if you send money into it the price of the what you sent in is obviously since the supply is increasing within the pool, it's decreasing, and whatever you get out, since it becomes more more scarce, it's increasing. But they didn't check whether the input and output is the same, so someone was just calling like crazy with the, with the both uh, with, with the same pairs, and actually it had a, had an issue that. Uh, it didn't add up the change, it just, it just used the last change. So it, 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 first it checked whether it should in, decrease, and then it saw it should increase, and it, also, it, it just only increased uh, the, the price of the, of, of the token, and someone just like stole out $31 million from a, uh, from a pool. So uh, I highly recommend to get uh, 
into this smart contract development because it's, it's, it's a lot of fun. Uh, hacking smart contracts on a test network is, is, is not doing any harm and you learn a shitload of about how, how different parts of uh, Ethereum is working. So thank you and, and GN. <laughs>